Hi, it's Stephanie here with Mahalo.com, and um, we're talking about infertility. Of course, it is a, a, an emotional struggle for couples who are going through it. One of the options is in vitro fertilization, and joining us now is Dr. John Jane to talk a little bit more about how to use in vitro fertilization. What are the steps? Sure. Well, first of all, let me define in vitro fertilization. It actually means fertilizing an egg outside the body in the lab. Today we use it to describe a series of processes that culminate in the production of a human embryo for embryo transfer. Um, women who, or couples who uh, need in vitro fertilization include those who failed simpler forms of therapy, men with really low sperm count, or women with blocked tubes. Um, the steps are as follows. Women administer hormonal injections to themselves for about two weeks. This is followed by a trip to the operating room during which the eggs are retrieved using a suction needle. The eggs are then transferred to the IVF laboratory where they're fertilized and allowed to grow as embryos for about three to five days. The final step is the transfer of embryos to the uterus of the intended mother. And so that's the whole process. Um, and with that, we see great success rates. Yeah, let's talk about the success rates. Uh, what are the percentages right now? Well, they're quite good uh, for women under 35. For example, if we're using IVF, for infertile women under 35, um, birth rates of 40 to 50 percent can be expected. For those 35 to 40, it's down to about um, 35 to 40 percent. And for those over 40 and under 44, it's about 20 percent. So those are still very strong percentages when you consider what our normal percentages are of just getting pregnant. Absolutely. Now, of course, the more embryos we transfer, the more chances they have, they have of getting pregnant. But we always try to limit the the incidence of twins or triplets. These are high-risk pregnancies, and it's always been a challenge in our field to help get a, a patient pregnant, especially someone who's spent a lot of money and has a lot emotionally invested in the process. And so while we want to transfer less embryos, patients frequently ask me to transfer more embryos, and that becomes uh, sometimes a difficult decision. Yeah, let's talk about that. I mean, is there a baseline? Do you recommend typically um, you know, transferring a certain number? Because some of them won't take, right? Absolutely. So the whole idea of in vitro fertilization is really playing the odds. More high quality embryos means more chance for pregnancy. We have national guidelines on this uh, that, are, uh, that have been uh, developed by the American Society of Reproductive Medicine. For example, women under 35 should only have one, maybe two embryos transferred. For women between 35 and 40, two, maybe three embryos transferred. And for those over 40, you can transfer five embryos. That's because we expect and for example, in women over 40, most of those embryos will not make it. And if you do have more embryos, you may have more births. We've seen uh, Octomom, of course. So there with the California octoplets, the so-called Octomom, we've seen the effect of, of uh, IVF on multiples, which we're all trying to safeguard against. So let's talk a little bit about those embryo transfers. Let's say you choose to transfer five and they all take, but the couple only wants one or two children. That seems like a tough situation. What happens there? There's a procedure called selective reduction, which uh, one or more of the pregnancies is terminated around 12 weeks. It's an emotionally difficult thing to go through, and we all really try to avoid it. That's why I think careful planning and counseling ahead of time and transferring less embryos is probably better. All right, Dr. John Jane, thank you so much for taking us through the steps of in vitro fertilization. Sure. And if you'd like more information about fertility, you can click on any of these links or you can subscribe to Mahalo Parenting. I want to give a special thanks once again to Dr. John Jane. I'm Stephanie Stanton. Thanks for watching.